Stu Gatz here. The Dan Levitard Show podcast is brought to you by Capital One. Capital One wants to build a better bank, one that feels and acts nothing like a typical bank. It's why they're reimagining banking by offering accounts with no fees or minimums and one of the best saving rates in America. You can open a Capital One account from anywhere in five minutes. That's banking reimagined. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Capital One, and a Message and data rates may apply. When did it become okay for men to be lazier, softer, fatter? We need to bring the men of this country back to greatness. And it's easier than ever with Ageless Male Max, a patent-pending formula with an ingredient that helps boost your total testosterone, promoting greater increases in muscle size and twice the reduction of body fat percentage than exercise alone. Plus, an amazing 64% increase in nitric oxide, which can be handy in the gym and in the bedroom. Take your manhood to the max by trying your first 30-day bottle free. Just pay shipping and handling. Not 10 days, not 15 days, but a full 30-day supply free. When you text the word LIFT to 797979. Finally, a formula that boosts total testosterone. If your results with Ageless Male Max are too intense, please decrease use. For your free bottle, text LIFT to 797979. Text L-I-F-T to 797979. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. This just happened. This happens around here a lot. Mike Ryan shouted in one room that Patino's on the offensive, a vampire's on the loose, daytime hours in New York, making the media rounds, doing so aggressively. And as he's doing this, Stugatz is yelling at his computer, give me Djokovic Nadal Sunday. I dare you. I won't watch football. And then he, he there's a pause and he's like, I'm lying. I will watch football. Yep. And it was a conversation he was totally having with himself. It's not a conversation he was having. He was daring (laughs) tennis to give him Djokovic and Nadal. He said, I dare you. I won't watch football. Actually, I'm a liar. Yeah, I'm admitting my lies uh, right after they come out of my mouth now. It's a new thing for me. But here's what I will do, because we're all waiting around for Nadal and Djokovic. That's the match everyone wants to see on Sunday, U.S. Open final. What I will do is I will split the screen and the volume, which is this is big, right? The volume will be on Djokovic and Nadal. How about that? The volume. All right. So Stugatz was also shouting at various points for reasons I don't really understand. Nadal's left arm, Dan. (laughs) Nadal's left arm. Now, I know that that's a mutated arm. If you look at pictures of Nadal's left arm versus his right arm, one of them is that of the Incredible Hulk. The other is just a normal man's (laughs) bronze uh, arm. The, he's he's got a thigh for for an arm, and Stugatz was saying that Nadal's left arm belongs in the body part Hall of Fame in sports. Would it go there above a pitcher? Like if you got to go left arm, you're putting it ahead of Steve Carlton or Sandy Koufax. There is no left arm that is going into that body part Hall of Fame uh, before Rafael Nadal's. Not a single one. There's an arm division, like an arm room in this body part Hall of Fame, and it's named after Rafael Nadal. Uh, that's it. Why don't baseball pitchers do what Nadal does? Why Why don't we see baseball pitchers with like much stronger arms than their weak arm? Hmm. I Get love, on that, pitchers. I love that question posed to Stugatz, and Stugatz on the radio shrugs both of his shoulders. Doesn't give you anything in the way of audio. You really <laughs> stumped him with the question. <laughs> Nadal, go ahead and Google it. It's funny, but what else are we putting in the body part Hall of Fame? Where else are we going here? He's already, Stugatz was already putting Saquon Barkley's thighs in the body part Hall of Fame. I got his thighs in the Hall of Fame. I have Brian Baldinger's finger in the body part Hall of Fame. Yeah, those thighs are attached to Larry Fitzgerald's butt. <laughs> is, is there only one finger allowed? Like, if you got to take Ronnie Lott, you got to take Ronnie Lott before you take Baldinger, right? Or is it one finger allowed only? Well, this is interesting what you're doing because the Pro Football Hall of Fame has many linebackers, many quarterbacks, many offensive tackles. You just want one for oh, each. No, oh, no, no, because no, I'm good with that. It's a more I'm interesting asking. Hall of Fame. It's your Hall Hall of Fame. I'm asking. Right. How about Kawhi's it's our Hall? How about of fame. Kawhi's hands, oh, but attached to one of his hands is Brian Baldinger's finger. Yeah. <laughs> why Kawhi's hands? The f- most famous hands in basketball. Because That's they're why. just big. Because they're gigantic. His logo is his hands. But you'd need Matumbo's, you know, pointer oh, finger. Oh, oh Matumbo's right, so finger. 
right. Wow. Who's the finger then? If I mean, I guess if you're going to put them all in, that's fine. But Matumbo's finger, Ronnie Lott's finger, Baldinger's finger. No. Stone Cold Steve Austin's middle finger. Yes. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I like what you guys are doing here where we just narrow it down to one. I think we all agree. Tongue is Michael Jordan, right? Yeah. That's it. Tongue yeah. is Michael Jordan. He owns that. It's that's just it, sports. Right? Yeah. Because if it's tongue anywhere, you'd go with Gene Simmons, I think. Yeah, but it's just sports because this wow. is an athletic. We're trying to build the perfect athlete. I'm going to go Floyd Mayweather's shoulder. <laughs> what? Just because of how he plays defense with it? The shoulder roll, man. <laughs> You're taking his shoulder? It does not belong in the body part hall of fame. And what's Baldinger doing in here? Why is Baldinger? Like, you got to have. The, the, don't the hall of fame body parts have to belong to hall of famers? What do you think about Steph Curry's shoulders for carrying Durant? Uh, go ahead. Give me a greater pair of shoulders than Steph Curry's. I mean, carrying that guy around for a couple of years. What makes him shout at his computer, give me to Nadal Djokovic, I dare you, I won't watch football Sunday, I'm lying. Like, why? <laughs> why do all those thoughts have to be spoken out loud? Look at him. He's he's a sports fan meathead. Uh, yeah. That's a great <laughs> Sunday coming up. He said that, and, and then he just realized, oh, it's the NFL. I'm lying. Uh, I'm telling you, there are a few Sundays better. Mike, you will agree with me. Few Sundays better than when you get the opening Sunday NFL season, and at 4 o'clock you get that U.S. Open men's final. It's too much. Yes. It's too much. <laughs> because I'm all excited because the Browns are undefeated. My team are, are undefeated heading into a season. I want to watch all the football because you miss football so much right Right now, and you want to go all out, and then you realize after one week why it is that you need some balance in your life. But I don't want the U.S. Open men's final uh, on the same time as the football kickoff week. I don't need it. Don't need it too much. Make it Monday. Make it Tuesday night. I don't think a lot of people care about that one. I don't think the uh, I don't think uh, football is losing any viewership to the U.S. Open. But it's losing me. It's a losing part. It's losing part of my attention span. Thankfully, yeah. I got the double decker TV set up. Right. But Nadal Djokovic won't get the sound because I don't need the sound for tennis. I can figure out what's happening. Oh, first. I need the sound for tennis, man. I need to hear the grunts. I need to hear the ball off the racket, the ball off that hard court. I need the sounds for tennis. Don't need it so much for football. First world problems here with these TVs. Oh, I'm telling you, it's not that it's not that big of an investment. Get yourself the double decker TV setup, people. How do you watch sports without it? Honestly, and for the NFL season, you're absolutely going to need the sound on because who's going to explain to you what a tackle is? <laughs> um, I'm curious. Is it true that Willie Taggart on Sunday was wearing a whistle around his neck? Oh, the on, Monday night game on yeah. the sud- uh, Yes, excuse me, the Monday night like. game. Uh, well, no, Al Golden wore a tie. He didn't wear a whistle. I thought he wore a whistle with the tie. No. No? No. 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 But bad. first of all, can we find out if it's true? Was Willie was Willie Taggart wearing a whistle on the sidelines during the game that where they got throttled by Virginia Tech and they look you know, Florida State had as disappointing an opening weekend as any team in the country? Uh, I'm checking on it. What I uh, can guarantee you is that Willie Taggart is on the hot seat. I mean, that's 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 it? One game? Yeah. Oh, of course, one game. I mean, wow. geez, it was a disaster. Minus seven yards in the third quarter. I mean, Sugats is right. The guy that hired him is already gone. He'd replace Oliver Luck. So he's already on the hot seat after one yeah. game. And yes, I have confirmed there is a whistle around Willie Taggart's <laughs> neck from this still from the Monday night throttling they received at the hands of Virginia Tech. Why? Why? He's Just, a coach. <laughs> yeah, but he's, Coaches wear whistles. See how fast he gets flagged for something if he's out there blowing that thing. Like, that's a strictly a hood ornament. He was wearing. <laughs> I mean, you can't have that. You can't have that. Those two things combined. You're the coach who comes out of the gate for FSU historic program that way. And also you're wearing a whistle around your neck when there is no chance that you will blow it. Coach Manning's forehead. Which Manning? Hey, Peyton. Pain. Yeah, and then you need yeah. Eli's lips. Yeah. Or just general face. Eli's face. Eli's face can't be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, it's the most, it's the funnest face in sports. It, it, is it? I thought it was Jay Cutler's face. I thought Jay Cutler's face was the funnest in sports. Strahan's teeth? What? Now wait a minute. What are Elway's we Elway's gums? No, but, no. LeBron's hairline? Oh. I don't even know what you guys are doing anymore. Body part Hall of Fame. I, 
you're playing a different game than the one I was playing. I know Taggart spent Monday night blowing it, but this is this is ridiculous. What? ESPN. What? I heard you. Uh-huh. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying a home for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a lot of anxiety and stress for a lot of people. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about that. They're calling it the power buying process. Here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, your assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. That gives you the strength of a cash buyer. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all-new exclusive rate shield approval. This is very cool here. First, they'll lock your rate up for 90 days while you shop. Now, here's the best part. If rates go up, your rates stay the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. Either way, you win. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, simple. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. Rate shield approval, only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records, equal housing lender, license in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. So during the break, Stugatz is just staring at the television, and he says to Adrian Wojnarowski, who should probably go without saying, isn't someone who can hear what he's saying yeah. because he's on television. He's not in the room. Mm-hmm. Stugatz looks at the TV and says, Woj, that's a nice shirt and jacket combo. Stugatz. I'm crazy. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. We'll get to what Terry Bradshaw had to say again about Mike Tomlin. Terry Bradshaw has won a lot of championships. He represents the face and balding head of Steelers championship glory. And he doesn't have much use for Mike Tomlin as a coach. Hmm. Says so publicly, which is not something you see very often from a guy who's a broadcaster taking out a coach that way in his city. And I really don't know what to do with the Steelers in this regard, Stugatz. I don't know whether they're overachievers or underachievers because they've got one of the best receivers I've ever seen. They've got one of the best running backs I've ever seen. They've got a quarterback we all know to be very good who's a multiple-time champion, uh, even though he's on the decline. So why, why does that team keep going up against New England and never winning? Because you know New England, if they had those players, would beat you with them. Right. But but Antonio Brown, they made him. Antonio Brown wasn't a high draft pick. No, Antonio Brown wasn't somebody who was viewed as a, as a great wide receiver coming out of school with great skills. Le'Veon Bell's a second-round pick. Ben Roethlisberger is a middle-of-the-first-round pick. They built those guys into what they are. Do they get credit for that, or are they underachievers because of that? Because... Rare is the team that has that threesome as its skill position set. Like right. there, there is no better threesome. That's the best there is. Uh, it's pretty. Yeah, I think it's it's probably the best in the NFL. Um, I guess it depends on your perspective and your history, right? Like Jet fans would sign up for Tomlin right now. The last ten years, they've they've won a Super Bowl, been to another Super Bowl. His record is one sixteen and sixty, but man. The, the, but the, yes, that's right. I mean, one sixteen right. and sixty. That's right. But what is the legacy of the Steelers, though? What is it? What is it right now? This group, not because Terry Bradshaw's coming from a different time. Terry Bradshaw's coming from when it was really the glory days of Pittsburgh. They were the Patriots. Back then, he was the quarterback, and it didn't much matter that he was the quarterback because he didn't have to be that good because everybody else around him was that good. It's a bit of a a, a murky. Well, their legacy is always going to be champions, no matter what. But it is a little murky because there was a cower one of the two rings. One was Cowers, one was Tomlin's, and it was towards the early part of Tomlin's tenure there. So was he doing it with the Cower guys a little bit? It's hard to sort of pick apart. And if you just go Tomlin, he started with a boom, but since. Yeah, it's been kind of disappointing. Bra- the- Bradshaw's talking from a different time because what he's talking about is how he feared his coach and he played uh, very strongly for a coach he feared. And he doesn't like the Tomlin, his buddy buddies with the players. 
So what he's arguing on behalf of is an outdated management style. I feared my coach, therefore I prefer if everyone feared Mike Tomlin. Right. I mean, but the game's changed, right? You would expect that that sort of opinion from Bradshaw. I think most players. I mean, don't want you've to got Le'Veon like Bell right now coming into the season whenever the hell he wants, arriving whenever he wants because he makes more money than his coach, and he still doesn't think it's enough. And the coach has how much power in that situation? Where Le'Veon Bell is sitting there saying, "I'm not coming into work. I'm kind of important to everything you do, game week." But there isn't one way of doing things, obviously. You have players, coaches like Pete Carroll that have been successful, and you have Bill Belichick and Tom Coughlin coming in and changing cultures and winning championships. Look what Jacksonville has given all the credit to Tom Coughlin by just being there and changing their culture. The last four seasons, so he's he's well removed from, from Cowers players and all that, right? The last four seasons, they've won the division three times. I mean, they're 45-19. and 19. They lost in the playoffs. That's frustrating, but still, a lot of teams would take that every single season. Well, but the most damning indictment, okay, if you want to criticize the Steelers, the most damning indictment is you got that receiver, that running back, that quarterback, and New England keeps beating you with those guys. Like, you can't do anything against New England when you know if the situation were reversed and you gave Belichick those same players, all of us would think he's going to go undefeated. Because <laughs> when he had Randy Moss, he almost did. Sure. I mean, I think the losses to New England, maybe the fans could stomach. I think it's the loss to Jacksonville at home that happened last year. Like, that's just, that's something. I mean, After a 13-3 turned and three out, season. Jacksonville turned out to be pretty good. Right. Yeah, and Jacksonville actually gave New England a hell of a game in that AFC championship. I mean, Pittsburgh did almost beat them head-to-head. -head. There was that weird catch-not-a-catch situation. We never got to see the matchup we thought we were going right. to see all year. There's that, too. Uh, Guillermo, do we have that sound cleared on this counterfeit Joey Galloway, who uh, the only fast we've seen him do around here is run away from this radio show's claims that he cannot actually run what he says he can run in his 40s. He's still out here propping up this lie. What, what is this from? What is the courtesy of that? Where is Joey Galloway still doing this? We have this wager against Joey Galloway that he cannot do this, what he says he can this do. This is a pregame show with Ed Nanberg before ESPN's college football. We coverage. cannot allow Joey Galloway to keep getting away with this on these airwaves. Who wins in a 40-yard dash? Joey Galloway, Bryce Love, Jonathan Taylor. Right now? Until you find either one of those guys put up a 4-1 something, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Four one something. He's still out here claiming he can run. How old is Joey Galloway now? Forty five. I think so. Yeah. yeah. We'll see the now. We tried to set this up, and I was trying to reach him directly, and I got ghosted for. Well, a, that's a what very happened. That's time. that. The last we heard from Joey Galloway is when we we right before we got ghosted. Now all of a sudden we can't. We've been trying. He needed perfect conditions. He needed. Uh, he needed his own timer. Uh, he, he needed. He was and still he said, get out of here. Four one. Nobody can run a four one in their forties. He's 46 now. Uh, I feel like that's his go-to move. It's almost like kicking off the football season. Like Joey Ga when Joey Galloway says that football season has begun. Uh, he says it every year. I remember a couple of years ago, and one of the few times I did actually speak to him and try to set it up, he's like, no, no, I can't do it in the winter. It has to be right at the spring because that's when my muscles are, are perfect because winter's too cold to be running a 4-1. That's when I'm most aerodynamic. But yeah. I just want it known publicly – that we, this radio show, is is publicly again calling Joey Galloway counterfeit for continuing to claim that he can run a 4-1 at 46 years old. I don't think he can beat Chris. No, I got him. <laughs> that we should set up. We should set up. Uh, oh, stop wasting your time. <laughs> Galloway ain't coming down here. He's scared, man. That we could get that to be a pay-per-view event. Joey Galloway running against <laughs> Fat Chris, who has proven to be the most undefeated of champions around here, smoking everyone, including uh, Thor Gill back there. Any season, I'll take him. <laughs> now, wow, wow, winner too. Look at this. Ooh. Look at this. Any season, Galloway. We got a bunch of frauds and counterfeit people. You got Golich here running away from... His ode, what's going on there? Is he just silently taking this beating publicly and saying nothing about it on air? 
Uh, apparently so. Yeah, he hasn't said anything to me either. I mean, I told you he gave me a private massage, put his hands on my glutes. I did not like it. I don't want another one. Uh, somehow I am sandwiched inside of bet you made with Golic last year in a Miami Will Notre you Dame quit game. Quit complaining about it and just answer my question of what's going on with Golic and why hasn't he massaged your glute yet for the way his Notre Dame team took a beating against Miami last year. He can't be out here gloating about how great Notre Dame is this year with this outstanding debt. I'm kind of hoping you forget about this, man. Payday! Payday! It is payday! Make your own bets. I mean. Go, Leach! You shouldn't be gloating. You should be gluting. <laughs> Don Lebatard. I love what the Rams are doing. The Rams have a head football coach who is younger than the child star Raven. Stugatz! What are you doing? What are you doing, Guillermo? Why are you making the face? What are you, doing? What are you, You've you doing? been using that child star Raven line. First off, her name is Raven Simone, yeah. and she's getting to the point that you should stop using that. But yeah. this is my point, that the coach of the Rams is a child star. Why are you guys making faces? Give me a better reference than that. Drew Barrymore? Give me a, I mean, no, come on, man. Drew Barrymore's well, damn near my age. No. <laughs> Jen, that, it's that, really? This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We have high potential potential for disaster in about 24 hours. Uh, no Stugatz, no Mike Ryan, but Gary Busey. Oh, man. Gary Busey. As co-host? Uh, oh, Gary, wow. Gary Busey is coming through. When Stugatz leaves town, we have to go get Gary Busey to replace him. Uh, Guillermo, why have you been laughing? I mean, the last 10 years of public Gary Busey have been amazing to watch. Uh, why are you laughing back there, Guillermo? Well, his book is Buseyism's Bible, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth, which I mean, some would say Gary Busey left Earth a while ago. <laughs> yeah, some <laughs> a decade ago. This I'm... is such a bummer, man. We're going to be tuned in at 11.30 a.m. Eastern when Gary Busey joins. You know why? Because that isn't just Gary Busey. It's Pappas. Oh, it's Pappas. We finally get Pappas, and Mike Ryan and Stugatz aren't even going to be here. It was like that day, <laughs> that day that I just didn't, I wasn't at the studio, and Brian Cranston shows up for an interview nobody knew we had at the height of Breaking Bad. When I all I want to do is talk of Breaking Bad, he shows up on a day I'm not here, and Sedano and Izzy end up talking to it. Wow. Do you still have uh, Brian Cranston's newspaper from what oh, yeah, he, yeah. and don't forget Benjamin Bratt? Who I had so many Demolition Man questions for. They both showed they up. They both showed together. up. Together. At Benjamin Bratt. Wow. No, but this nice isn't Bratt's up. newspaper. This is just That's Cranston's. Cranston's? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was a tough one for you, right? Because Cranston's the guy you wanted on forever. Well, I, I felt the same way. I was out one day. You guys had Iverson on. Cran AI. Br Brian Cranston showing up unannounced, nobody having any explanation for how this might have been, and doing an, a sit-down interview with George Sedano and Izzy Gutierrez is probably the most incredible show moment we've ever had. I mean, it was it was really <laughs> weird. It was certainly Surreal. Not. There's 50 Buseyisms in here, by the way. If you want any of them, just let me know. Love, living on victorious energy, Buseyism. Which one is the ex-presidents or surfers? Exactly. Surfers. Forgive. Finding ourselves really giving individuals valuable energy. Death. Don't expect a tragedy here. Life. Living in forever eternity. 50, I'm not going to read 50. Is <laughs> You're not going to read 50 of them? You. That's too bad. I mean, Point Break is our favorite movie. Uh, Pappas is on tomorrow. Mike and I won't be here. I'm very upset about this. Can I tape a question or two, just a Point Break question or two that you could uh, play for Pappas? <laughs> you think Busey's going to know the difference? <laughs> that dude's been fried for two decades. Chapter 22, bad. Baloney and dirt. The guy's got fried egg for brain. <laughs> so, Yes. Yeah, you can ask all the questions if you want. You can tape record all the questions for Pappas. 22 years in L.A., lots changed. The air got dirty and the sex got clean. Pappas. Chapter 43, Odd, Other Dynamic Dimensions. I'm going to read this. I mean, you already are, it sounds like. 
feel free though to get find any of the funny stuff. <laughs> you know, like if you want to waiting for like, it. I, I'm just, I, I, maybe you'll just keep reading and not have funny stuff. Just acronym after acronym. Pappas is an iconic movie uh, character, is he not? No. no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, Put that on the poll right no, now. No. I dare you. All right, for us. He's an iconic All right. All right. movie. Right. Pappas from Point Break. Uh, Billy doesn't even know who Pappas Guillermo, is. put it on the poll. Is Pappas from Point Break an iconic movie? I thought we were talking about a tennis player. Eric. Who's Pappas? <laughs> Pappas is Johnny Utah's uh, veteran partner that has the whole theory that the ex-presidents are surfers. He really cracks the case with the help of Johnny Boiler Utah, alert. who goes undercover with the help of an entraining of Lori Petty to infiltrate the ex-presidents. Is Top Gun? No, this is point break. Oh, well, hold on a second, because some people were asking before how Guillermo knows who Gary Busey is and who Kiss is, but not the Beastie Boys. Uh, and it just got me to thinking about many of you probably don't even know this story. Gene Simmons was on with us one time. It is weird that you would know. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Is it weird that uh, Guillermo would know who Kiss is, but not the Beastie Boys? Um, Gene Simmons was on with us and he is just the cheesiest. This is not surprising to anybody. He is got an undercurrent of foul, foul sewage running underneath all his pipes. And Hi, so- this is Gene Simmons. Ask your sister and your mommy too. She knows about me. And Dan Levitz, those farm animal pictures I have of you, I promise I won't tell anybody. <laughs> all right. The part I was going to set up though was the idea that he said, I got this. I got this. I'm a radio veteran. I know how to do all of these wacky radio promos because I'm Gene Simmons. And so he does it and he nails it. Hi, this is Gene Simmons. Ask your sister and your mommy, too. She knows about me. And Dan Levitz, those farm animal pictures I have of you. Ben Roethlisberger, to me, has more pressure on him than Aaron Rodgers. Because Aaron Rodgers has been a one-man army carrying the Green Bay Packers on his back for years. That has not been the case with Big Ben. Am I lying? Can you stop carrying Aaron Rodgers' water right now? Please. Can you stop carrying his water right now? Can I tell you you, I will gladly do it. I will gladly do it. I will gladly. I'd be a water boy for Aaron Rodgers if I was in the NFL. You know what? He's that bad. You know what? I don't concern myself with Big Ben and Pittsburgh Steelers. Because they'll never get over that mental roadblock that is annoying. Oh, 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 they'll never get over that. Go ahead, Max. Who's um, that? Um, please. Your animal pictures I have of you, I promise. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Demand once more money. Stugatz to this day still refers to me as Levitt. I do. <laughs> Dan Levitt. Dan Levitz. <laughs> Great day. <laughs> Dan Levitz. Computer, execute 12.4p operation. Optimizing algorithm. Running encryption packet alpha. Night, night. Oh, I don't feel so good. What? What is it, computer? Is it hot in here? It feels hot in here? I feel a little clammy. I should lie down or something. A computer with a virus? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. Those oysters Rockefeller were a mistake. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Levitard. Fake Marty Smith. You're on ESPN Radio. Stugatz. Hey, Benno. It's Marty Party. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Hey, Stu. Hey, hey Marty. Yeah. Hey, hey, guys. Hey. I just parachuted out of a plane, man, and uh, in Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa just got down here. I'm with Nick Saban, man. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah, going to go bass fishing on some jet skis. Yeah, that's great. This is the Don Levitard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. I had to separate Mike Ryan and and Stugatz during the break because they were arguing about best Gary Busey characters. There have been no good ones ever in the history of Gary Busey. Gary Busey has nothing uh, but awful characters. You're right. They're uh, they're never good. They're only great or awful. There is no in between. Yes. Yep. And he's had, I think, three great ones. Everything else, awful. We got Chet Stedman. Chet Stedman, Rookie of the Year. The right. Rocket, but don't call me Rocket. Why? Because I ain't the Rocket anymore. Chet Stedman. <laughs> we have Angelo Pappas. And this kind of hurts the guy in third place right now for me because I don't know his name, even though I love Lethal Weapon. He's a bad guy in Lethal Weapon. Do you know his name, Roy? Mr. Joshua. You're so good. Oh, wow. That's you're why man. you're the best. Wow. That is why you're the best. You have, you were just, you got there so fast with Mr. Joshua. And it, you're the only person in the world who could have done that. 
I salute you, Roy Bellamy, for this useless information that you have assembled <laughs> that only make appearances one every four or five years here on the show. Yeah, it's not useless today, now is it? <laughs> <laughs> You think Gary Busey would have known that? <laughs> I'm going to ask him tomorrow because I bet you he doesn't. Like we could ask him things about his own career. This is going to go off the rails. This is going to be. It's been a while since we've had one of these, uh, at one of these just uncomfortable interviews where you know going in it's going to be a train wreck, and so we're just going to sit around staring at each other as we sink into the sewage, all of us together. <laughs> because I saw him the other day on one of these business channels, and he's he is. What? <laughs> yes, he is spewing all sorts of well, positivity it, and light. Stock yes. advice? Or, well, well, he's selling his book. He'll uh, take, I mean, look, man, him and Patino are wandering the streets of New York right now selling books. They're going to bump into each other, and I don't know which one of them is crazier. Like, they're going to run into each other, and it's going to be the two Spider-Men pointing at each other. <laughs> it's Gary Busey and Patino. You're a vampire. No, you're a vampire. What are you doing out in the light? <laughs> Patino said, I'll get up this morning. He told Greeny he's done coaching <laughs> this century. <laughs> yeah. Maybe next century he'll make a return to coaching. He will. I love that on Get Up they had under his name uh, 2013 Basketball Hall of Famer Rick Patino. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's funny, man. It is that funny. That is rich, man. It is. <laughs> Um, Mike, can you tell me, I, I need to understand something here because I am uh, getting increasingly frustrated with sales around here uh, because we, I wanted to do Tim Legler's Halloween. I wanted to do a remote from Tim Legler's house on Halloween. We gave sales how much time to sell it to a candy sponsor or something like that. Please help me here because yep. I don't know what the rules are here, but I'm getting frustrated because, again, our marching band to nowhere marches to nowhere. We've had months to plan the idea of a remote at Tim Legler's house, almost a year, really. Yeah. Uh, here's a, We started planning for this uh, in uh, in March, really, having conversations and uh, trying to get it sponsored because right now it's a budgetary concern flying the entire show out there uh, to Tim Legler's house. Here's the good news. Tim Legler is in. All the parties are in except for the people that have to pay for it. Well, who do I need to fire up in sales here or fire in sales here uh, to to get some of this done? Because the bald guy in sales is gone now. Uh, yeah. But we need to start feuding with these people because they clearly don't listen to our show. And it's a pretty big show. And they might want to figure out how to sell some of this stuff for us because – we can pay to have our staff go somewhere if you get a candy sponsor for Halloween in a way that doesn't make me beg for candy sponsors on air if they would just do their job. Right. I mean, it doesn't have to be wow. a candy sponsor. Wow. Anything will do. We'll the take natural anybody. tie-in. Though, anyone. Halloween. Anyone. Step up, fly the entire show out there. Because right now, we're, we have a call on Monday where we're trying to save this thing. And it might just be, I don't know, Guillermo going up to Tim Legler's house. Which we want the entire show up there. That'd be great. I, I okay, but do do we have someone by name that we can smoke out? It's is there someone in sales? Is it Martindale? Who is it? Is it's it Mastella? Not, not Martindale. Is it Mastella? Mastella. Ma Mastella. Don't say a bad word about Jeff Martindale. <laughs> Mastella. Well, who do, like I, a decade who do I have to say the bad words about? Who do I, I, I have to say the, the bad words? I want to say all. Sue and I are give going to a names. sales convention yes. tomorrow. Okay. We will pay for you for you saying this. I mean, I desperately want to give it to you because I'm not happy about tomorrow because we have to do this up front. But I ain't giving you this name. Give me a name. Give me one name that I can uh, hammer on yeah. air. One name. It's Fitz. <laughs> Stu Gatz here. The Dan Levitard Show podcast is brought to you by Capital One. Capital One wants to build a better bank, one that feels and acts nothing like a typical bank. It's why they're reimagining banking by offering accounts with no fees or minimums and one of the best saving rates in America. You could open a Capital One account from anywhere in five minutes. That's banking reimagined. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Capital One, and a. Message and data rates may apply. When did it become okay for men to be lazier, softer, fatter? We need to bring the men of this country back to greatness. And it's easier than ever with Ageless Male Max, a patent-pending formula with an ingredient that helps boost your total testosterone, promoting greater increases in muscle size and twice the reduction of body fat percentage than exercise alone. Plus, an amazing 64% increase in nitric oxide, which can be handy in the gym and in the bedroom. Take your manhood to the max by trying your first 30-day bottle free. Just pay shipping and handling. Not 10 days, not 15 days, but a full 30-day supply free. When you text the word LIFT. 
to 79, 79, 79. Finally, a formula that boosts total testosterone. If your results with Ageless Male Max are too intense, please decrease use. For your free bottle, text LIFT to 79, 79, 79. Text L-I-F-T to 79, 79, 79. All right, so uh, Colin Kaepernick, you may have heard. Colin Kaepernick is now the Nike spokesman for the 30th anniversary of Just Do It. Everyone on this network had an opinion about that yesterday. The president of the country now says that it's a terrible message that Nike is sending. Here's Will Kane. You can hear Will Kane every day here on the station, ESPN Radio, whatever station you're listening to us on. It's right after us. Will Kane, here he is on the Kaepernick issue. He appears wherever it is that people are discussing Kaepernick. He appears and starts talking about it. Sometimes it's on a on a rowboat. Sometimes he's just uh, catapulted in from some sort of wooden thing. Wherever it is that people are talking about Kaepernick, Will Kane shows up. With this endorsement, with this sponsorship, Colin Kaepernick has gotten paid by Nike for the cause he's been the front man for. Nike is going to get paid on the back of an issue that meant more than selling shoes. And everybody in the entire line now, because Nike wanted this, different than in and out Different than Chick-fil-A. Nike wanted this. Nike is profiteering off what was a serious issue. Nike has capitalized, monetized your true believer thoughts. Nike is the only person here who's intent on business and getting paid. That's where your social issues sit today in 2018. Uh, but it's still an important issue. Whether Nike decides to commercialize it or not, it can still be an important issue, even as a sneaker campaign might feel like it cheapens it. But let's get more Will Kane here. You can hear him every day after our show. I don't work up the level of outrage of the people out there obviously burning their Nikes on social media, or even those that are upset about it. I'm not upset about it. Not upset about Nike. Not upset about Kaepernick. The only thing I would say is this. The idea that Kaepernick sacrificed everything... That, to me, was a misstep. That's a message that could upset people. And that a message, understandably, people be like, really? Becoming the spokesman for Nike? Getting a multi-million dollar endorsement campaign with Nike? Giving up a pro football career? That's sacrificing everything? I understand people to go, please, put that in context. Even on these issues, look at guys. You don't have to do the military thing. You don't have to talk about the people who have given up their life. You can even talk about the people who gave up in the fight for civil rights. Much more than the everything it's insinuated Colin Kaepernick gave up. It's just a little much to say Colin Kaepernick sacrificed everything. After Stephen A's show, that's a fun. Well, we'll hear from Stephen A on this issue because if Kaepernick is being discussed somewhere, he sometimes will arrive as well by bumper car or by rocket ship or uh, by uh, by the transportation out of Syracuse from the Syracuse football locker room. Stephen A. Smith can also be heard after our show, and he had opinions on Colin Kaepernick. We're not aware that Kaepernick knew it would sacrifice everything because he didn't announce to the world what he was doing. He just took a knee, and the local and national media ignored it for weeks. And then after he was asked, he told them why he was taking the knee. But even after that, he was still on the roster. He was still playing. And when he left, he opted out of his own contract. Kaepernick wasn't aware it would cost him everything. There was no plan here. Why you think the Players Coalition got their own plan, but Kaepernick, Eric Davis, and others, in terms of teammates, have their own other vision? There's no orchestrated, devised plan here. There's never been. He meant Eric Reed. Yeah, you can't hear both after our show. That's impossible. They don't do a show together. It's Stephen A. after us. Will Kane does three they, to six. We're not, not on a impossible. radio station. We're on a radio network. Well, but yeah. they, 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 they do do a show together, though, and that show is first take. Right. But right. Dan had said both those guys' shows were on after our show here on the radio station. They are, but they both, are both after ours. Yeah, but not directly after hours. I mean, Will Kane, you got to sit through two hours of Stephen A. Smith until you get before you get to Will Kane. That's all. I just, I'm not certain if you knew the lineup. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just but one is up. directly after us, right? And then the, the other one's directly after that one. Yeah, that is correct. Yes. Yep. Stephen A. first, and then Will Kane is second. That is right. Let's hear some more from Stephen A. Smith on how Nike has hijacked this story. Everybody's sitting up there and they're saying, Nike, Nike, ahead of the curb. Nike, on the right side of history. Nike, Nike, Nike. Well, bravo, Nike. Congratulations for being so damn obvious. Here's my question to Nike. Where the hell have you been? Two years 
For the last two years, you have been paying Colin Kaepernick. Where were the advertisements? Where was the marketing? Where were the T-shirts and the shoes? Where was that at? Where were those merchandise? What was going on? You were a bit late to the party. And so now that Nike has jumped on the bandwagon and essentially hijacking the issue themselves, we're going to find ourselves talking about what Nike did instead of what Colin Kaepernick supposedly intended. So hijack it sooner is the point. If you're going to hijack this story, do it a couple of years earlier. Um, I think everything that's being said there is largely true. And I think that Nike got a return on its investment yesterday, even as the stock price dropped just by everyone talking about this. Their investors are not happy. Nike investors are not happy because of the, well, because of that news and the drop that came. All, that all sneaker companies went down yesterday. And again, we will repeat that Adidas and Puma were talking about doing this before, uh, Nike decided uh, to re up with him. They were talking about, uh, whether there was been money to be had here. And again, we continue to criticize the, the both the messengers and the way that the message is being diluted here because it becomes about something else. We're now arguing about Nike. We're now arguing about whether um, it cheapens it slightly or by degrees, but a a sponsor that is one of the NFL's biggest, and we know the NFL cares about that. We don't know that the NFL cares about this issue, actually. We know that the NFL cares about its sponsors. One of its biggest is Nike, and one of its biggest did this without consulting the league that it knows it must have infuriated with this. And now the next question becomes, these ads going to be running during games? Are these ads going to be running during during football games to remind people that a quarterback has been almost literally blacklisted? That's uh, that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, does the NFL have the power to not air those commercials during the game? I don't know I how don't that know, works. I don't know the uh, answer to that question, but I've seen the reports, though, that the NFL was not informed of this. And that becomes the first giant company to say, okay, we don't mind those presidential Twitter hands. We'll take, we'll take everybody's, everybody in the NFL, all these, the guys running this tough guy sport, all of them are afraid of the president of the United States sticking his beak in their business, literally in their business. None of them want that. And Jerry Jones has said so in, in sworn testimony, but Nike doesn't mind. And, it can be both. Nike can get involved in this fight, and Nike can also profit off of getting involved in this fight. They could be. We keep making this mistake of making these companies moral arbiters for us. <laughs> Nike's in the money making business, and if you read some of the stuff about this in terms of how they do marketing strategy and the timing of this announcement in terms of where their quarter year ends and where it is that their advertising starts. This is systematic. They didn't just decide yesterday, hey, right before the NFL season, a week before, a week before, let's drop this on Goodell. They didn't just decide that one day. Like everything Nike does is is touched by a lot of hands. And they're better at it than almost anyone in sports. Almost anyone across sports, they're better at selling their stuff. You think that they just did this by some sort of accident? Important conversation. I'm glad we're having it. I'm a squeaky toy, and I've got one job, getting chomped on by this little ankle sniffer. So pardon me for feeling inept compared to Geico, who does so much more. Like, while I'm getting slobbered on, Geico is creating cool technology like their mobile app, which lets people pay their bills or file a claim. Plus, Geico is the fastest-growing auto insurer for the last 10 years. Is it too much for me to ask for one more feature? Fast and friendly claim service like Geico, maybe? Oh, great. I'm getting buried again. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Don Lebertard. Wasted away again in Marzaritaville. Searching for my lost shaker of sand. Stugats. Some people claim that there's a green person to blame. <laughs> really? But I know. I'm not Marzaritaville, baby. This is the Don Lebertard show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Get in touch with the show anytime to the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. It's at Lebertard Show at Stugats790. Dan, it's time for Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. This is from Sports. 
sports law professor Alicia Jessup. Nike is a global brand whose last reported revenue was $9.79 billion. It conducts marketing research and employs renowned advertisers. The timing of yesterday's ad comes three weeks before its next earnings report and three days before the NFL season starts. Nike knows exactly what it's doing. <laughs> I, it's it's the the part the part that I would be most interested in finding out about is how does this go over at the NFL offices to have one of its giant sponsors the, the everyone is cloaked in the Nike gear in this sport to have one of its giant sponsors not only do this but do this without asking permission do this without consent do this it, as as is being reported as as a blind side to one of your sponsors to to one of uh to one of your big partners you have to imagine they're upset by it though don't you i mean naturally i, I they would, would love be upset. to know what the honest conversations are i would love to know um because much as the president of the united states has chosen this as a winning issue for him as mm-hmm. testified by Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, this is a winning issue for Nike. I'm assuming the research shows. Yes, I, I'm. I'm assuming that they can. They have a way to quantify when they're doing revenue of nine point seven nine billion. I'm going to go ahead and give them the credit that perhaps they know a little bit about how to run a business and what choices they make in terms of marketing. And I just, I think Kaepernick, whatever they've paid him over the last year, he just paid for himself. He just what by a lot. He just you cannot buy you cannot buy this kind of advertising all over ESPN where Nike wants in on this discussion. I think Nike said they got or there was a report, Mike, right? Maybe thirty five, forty million dollars worth of PR since the Kaepernick announcement. Since yeah. they made that announcement. And to answer Dan's question, they kind of gave us a non answer while declining to comment. This is courtesy of uh, USA Today from a, a Nike spokesperson. Nike has a long standing relationship with the NFL and works extensively with the league on all campaigns that use current NFL players and its marks. Uh, however, Colin isn't uh, currently employed by an NFL team and has no contractual obligation to the NFL. Nike doesn't care. I mean, maybe they do a little bit, but they don't care about me or you or what Will Kane has to say. They care about teenage kids and whether or not they're going to buy Nike shoes. I mean, that's what they care well, about. But I, I would be curious about this, though. The part, the, the part to me that's most interesting in the games of rich people is I'd love to hear from Phil Knight on this. I'd love to know what Phil Knight, who treats sports as a bit of a toy, he, the Oregon football program, you've heard the stories about how they're opulent because of him and he's allowed to call plays during games with his booster friends in the skybox because he just runs that program. It's a, it's a playpen for him. I would love to know honest thoughts from somebody as the, as the spokesman for for this company i would just love to know how high this climbs and if he's decided no i want in on this fight i want to fight this league i want to fight my corporate partner like how high does this stuff climb when you get to these decisions you one would assume that this is not done without phil knight is by any any consensus top five most powerful man in sports right like i if i put phil knight and jerry jones apart across from each other isn't Phil Knight the monster? Like, who am I putting next to Phil Knight where you're like, that guy's as powerful in sports as Phil Knight, the well, guy who runs Nike? Jerry Jones had no comment and said he respects Nike. Well, he, but he's done talking for right. the moment just because he's made so many messes that Goodell has finally told him to shut up. Yeah, I'm going to say Tom Brady. Most powerful person in that league. Yeah. Garoppolo, out of here. Yep. Guerrero, back on flights. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me a question about Guerrero. I'll walk away. He's back on the sideline. <laughs> Allison, do we have any chance of getting Phil Knight on here? Yeah, we, uh, we requested him. He passed uh, today. He may pass tomorrow. Well, he passed yesterday. No one's heard from Phil Knight on this. There, Nike has people that they pay lots of money to go out and put out uh, official statements. But on this one, wouldn't you imagine? I don't know what kind of delegator he is, but on this one, this is not something that crosses the CEO's desk and ends up in anyone's face before he has said yes. Correct. Oh, Phil Knight's very involved. One, yes. one yeah. has to assume that, that this this is not something that you're just delegating to your people. 
Uh, correct. There's no way. I can't imagine there's a way where this happened without Phil Knight having knowledge of it and ju- proving it. What I would just love is some honest, transparent conversations about what's happening there. I don't I don't think we're entitled to it, and it's not the way people run big business. But if you want to get me engaged on this topic that is so tired with nothing new over the last year, the way to do it is how do the rich people really think? What do they really think? Man, I, maybe I'm jaded, but I don't think the uh, the issue at the heart of this matter is really what's discussed at the office at Nike headquarters. I think this is a risk analysis conversation. What is doing this cost us? What's the fallout with our partners? But I'd love to know what that is, though. I'd love to because on all look, man. When it comes to race and Kaepernick, we've seen over the last few years that it's just about everyone taking sides. Everyone keeps taking sides. It's one of the reasons this conversation has gotten tired. But I would like to know in honest terms, I would love to know, can it be both? Is Nike making a marketing decision and also some sort of principled stand by specifically doing this this week it's the open of the season their partner does not want this talked about the only reason it's being talked about is because nike made it talked about we were not going to be talking about this this week but it seems like you're engaged because you've been talking about it for a half hour but it's an important conversation i'm glad we're having it don libertard why do people still use yellow highlighters pink highlighters purple highlighters blue highlighters green highlighters Orange highlighters. Why are people using yellow highlighters? Marlins fans, this is our year. Another one. I love DJ Khaled. He's so dope. Stugats. We the best. This is what I do. I yell. Fire emoji. Fireworks. Flames. Boom. Derek Jeter. (laughs) I made him a New Yorker. Marlins fans, I don't have much else than this. We probably shouldn't have broke 10 minutes early last segment. Really threw off the clocks here. Now we have to fill for another 15 minutes. Another one. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Football is approaching, and that means I want you to imagine Stugats, not unlike Rambo in the movies, dropping to a knee with a sleeve of bullets on his left arm as he goes nipple to nipple with his takes machine gun takes rapid fire he is just spitting information during the breaks okay so this was my experience the last break go ahead and rat a tat tat the things that you are firing at me because you are just consuming information nonstop as football approaches well i mean mike reese is saying that this is the second worst wide receiver core that tom brady has ever had I mean, I find that fascinating that this is the second where the Tom Brady's really never wa- has has done so much winning with such poor wide receivers, with the exception of Randy Moss. That is pretty amazing. It's kind of like Nick Saban doing all that winning without having a quarterback. And now he has the greatest quarterback in the history of college football. So there's that. And then there's Bill Barnwell, who wrote a piece explaining how every team in the NFL could win the Super Bowl and how they do it. And what their percentages are of doing it. And he grouped them in categories. Mike, you have a chance. What? <laughs> you, you have a chance. <laughs> now it's a 0.1% chance, but you have a shot. Mike Ryan is a Browns fan, has been since his childhood when his abuelita at the dollar store, the only dishes that were left were Cleveland Browns dishes. Yep. Oh man, I'm hurting. What a bloodbath Hard Knocks was last night. We'll get to that in a second. So you have a group of teams, including the Browns, who have a .1% of, at less than .1%, according to Barnwell, of winning the Super Bowl. But they have a shot. How is that a shot? Well, Barnwell is saying division is down. Browns are quarterback play is a lot better. Turnover margin ratio will go down a lot. And if things bounce the right way, the Browns could find themselves in the Super Bowl. I mean, listen, it's a bunch of malarkey. I'll tell you right now. But anyone who's going to sit here and tell me my Jets have a chance and they're in that less than 0.1% category, I am all in. So the Jets have a less than 0.1% chance of winning the Super Bowl along with the Bills. Now the Dolphins, for, you know, our Miami fans down here, they have a 0.2% chance Ooh, of winning a Super yeah, Bowl. They're in that group. Yeah, Get they're in that group. Yeah. 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 Gasing yep. it. We and Landry. they're the only one in that group. Only one in the 0.2% group. That makes sense. Yep. Then you skip up to 0.3%, and that's where you have the Giants and the Redskins. How about that? 
And the Broncos at 0.4%. Don't you stop. Just keep going. Oh, you want me to keep going? Yes. Bears, 0.5%. They oh, were, was that pre or post-Mac? That was post-Mac. Whoa. Pre-Mac, they were in the Jets and Browns category. Oh, wow. So Khalil Mack is good for 0.4%. We should have got Mac. How about that? Yep. Bengals, 0.5%. That's they, right. I had the Giants there at 0.5. Yeah, well. Barnwell's the expert. Raiders, 0.5%, and then you jump up to 0.6. What were the Raiders post-Mac? Well, that's Raiders post-Mac. What were they pre-Mac? I'll get to I think they were about 0.75, but I'll check on that. I'll confirm in a second. Bad deal. Yeah. And then you got the Lions, the only team at 0.6, and then you make a big jump up to 0.7, and that's where you'll find the Seahawks, the Colts, and then you get into the ones. We're finally getting to the teams with a 1% chance. Greater than 1% chance. Oh. <laughs> Give me one. 1.3%. One. One. <laughs> Give me one. 49ers. No! Oh, 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 sleeper. <laughs> sleeper with a 1.3% oh, chance. But that McKinnon injury probably hurt their chances. 1.3%. Now I've arrived at a place... Greater than 1.5%. Okay, you're basically in the Super Bowl. So the real, the real contenders. Cowboys. Oh 1.7%. Wow, that's low. <laughs> Titans also in that category. Oh, oh get the Titans in their 8 and 8 out of here. Yeah. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Guillermo put it on the poll. Get the Titans in their 8 and 8 out of here. Yes or no? Now it jumps up to 1.8, just one team. It's the Texans. Okay. I should have written this article. But anyway. Okay. Oh, you're not that good at math. No, I'm not. Now we're in the twos. This is where it gets interesting. Okay. Now we're in the, these teams have a Bill, these teams have a real shot. What's the best? These what's the best? Mad. Yes, it is. Oh wait, are all these going to equal a hundred? Is that, is that how this works? I'm not certain. <laughs> is anyone keeping track? <laughs> is it supposed to? <laughs> what difference does that make? If it comes out at 110 percent, what difference does it make? It should add up to 110 percent because mm-hmm. teams don't win the Super Bowl without giving 110 percent. Ladies and, and gentlemen, it. there it is. So we're in the twos, low twos, granted, and then there's a big jump. There's only one team in the twos, and then it jumps up over the threes. <laughs> Carolina, 2.1% chance. I like that one. Okay. Like that. Dead on. Dead on. Dead we can on. all agree. Dead consensus. On. Dead on. 2.1% chance. Now you got Jacksonville. 3.1%. Wow. That's a big jump. Uh, that's 3.1. Wow. 3.1. He has the Chiefs at 3.2. Oh, so many unknowns. Ahead moves. of the Jags. Oh. Yep. How does Sammy Watkins fit? This is where it starts to go downhill for me. Really? Barnwell says the Ravens have a 3.5% chance of winning a Super Bowl. Oh, no, no, no. That defense pins its ears back. Ooh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, he's a loon. He's a loon for saying the Ravens are that high. So then what happens here is, you know, you have the charges at 3.7, and then you just skip the fours, skip the fives, you jump right to the sixes. What? Yeah. Is this the highest percentage chance? This is the Falcons at 6.2%, eighth highest percentage chance, 6.5 Saints. Wow. I'm going to jump up here, okay? Okay. okay. To the top three. Okay. Because well, hold on, slow down, because this has really escalated in a way that has been, uh, you know, hypnotic and disorienting and terrible radio. So get the uh, production uh, out here so that we can give this the appropriate fanfare here. This is Bill Barnwell. Every team in the league has a chance to win the Super Bowl, but some have a better chance than others. Here it is. The top three just released Bill Barnwell numbers. 11.1% the Philadelphia Eagles. Woo! How about that? That's the defending champion. Yep. And just to tell you how good Barnwell thinks the Eagles are going to be, the Rams, 7.7%. Gave us a bonus fourth there for no reason. Yeah, for no reason, reason, right, to make it uh, more boring. Uh, Steelers coming at number two, 11.6%. No, but they're going to lose to Cleveland. No Le'Veon Bell? You kidding me? And then... 16.4% 16.4% chance of winning the Super Bowl. Astronomical. The Patriots. Of course. No, come on. Come on, Barnwell. Come on, Barnwell. We just got done saying they're the second worst receivers ever. The quarterback's 100 years old. They've been doing this for 40 years. Come on, years. Barnwell. 40 Barnwell. years. Barnwell. Barnwell's a jerk. Hey, you ruined it, Barnwell. What kind of list just puts the Patriots at the end. We can't name any but one of their players. What kind of list gives the Jets and the Browns a chance? It's just Gronk and Brady. I added it up. It's 100.3%. Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> Where's the other 10? <laughs> Demand once more money. 
The regular season starts tomorrow. It, it starts tomorrow. It's here. I can't believe that. Football's back, baby. Yeah. Well, and entertainment porpoise on those road doggies, huh? <laughs> like the Falcons now. Like their chances. The Bills are really going with Nathan Peterman. Yep. That's a thing that's happening. Yeah. How does this coach, how is this guy allowed to do this? He was really good during the preseason. Point one percent chance. I mean, <laughs> they got rid of Taylor. Took him to the playoffs. This seems crazy to me. Yeah. I know, but it, this is where the Bills are, right? It's they can't possibly trust either one of their quarterbacks because it's Josh Allen and this guy Peterman. But they trust uh, Nathan Peterman not at all, but more than Josh Allen. I was reading they don't trust their offensive line. So they don't want the rookie to get hurt behind that offensive line, I, so they look, just throw out Peterman. i, I got to be honest with you. I believe no one in the Bills organization trusts each other. <laughs> and I believe all of that is earned. Put I, that I, on the bowl, put it, do anyone? Does anyone in the Bills organization trust any other Bill? AARP can help you become your healthiest self. It's why we offer health tips for your body and your brain. So take on today and every day with AARP. Learn how at takeontoday.aarp. Don Lebatard. If Mission Impossible is on your television, you're going to watch it for a few minutes. Like, they're all entertaining, although I would say the one that was bad was the one where there were faces being peeled off. I thought that oh, was no, that's no, every, that's every one. That's yeah, every one. Everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. apply that rule, yeah. then it's all no, of them. The one where it was, no, no, but the one where the it Philip was. The Philip Seymour Hoffman the, one? The one where everybody was pulling the off of them. Are you face. out of your mind? Not a single bad moment in any of those movies. Not one. Stugats. You do not have a good movie if you have a movie in which your face is being peeled off as a plot twist. Did that's, you not like the mask? Did you not, not like the mask? Not, that was when Swing like was coming mask, back. Was did terrible. you not like the mask? Terrible. Do you not like Tex Avery? Do you not like Cameron Diaz? This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. I don't say this just because NFL films and because Hard Knocks can slickly package just about anything. The Browns are interesting. I understand that they're a laughing stock because they've won one game in two years, uh, but some things about this Browns team are different, and I do not believe they will be laughable this year. One of the things is they have their best quarterback in well, how many years? Is it 20 years? They're going to get competent quarterback play that doesn't have a lot of turnovers in it. Uh, Miles Garrett looks like the second coming of Khalil Mack. Like he's, he's just, he's unblockable. He's not someone who, it's Aaron Dollar, uh, Aaron Donald, Khalil Mack, and it looks like Miles Garrett, someone who is simply not blockable. And they've got the most interesting skill position player in the game in terms of a wild card where if he's healthy and playing for you in 14 games, he will lead the league in receiving, even if Brandon Whedon is his quarterback. But you have no idea from quarter to quarter whether you can trust him. That's high price for Jarvis Landry. I mean, easily their best quarterback, right, since since Bernie Kosar? And I don't know which quarterback you're talking about because we got two of them now. <laughs> so excited. We have players I mean, I know it sounds like a lot, but there are good players on the field. It's amazing to see good good people at football. It's it's not something I see. I'd like to be clear. If we agree that this is the best quarterback situation they've had since Bernie Kosar, Bernie Kosar last played quarterback for the Browns in 1993. I mean, Butch had a difficult decision between Tim Couch and Kelly Holcomb. And yes, you may want to laugh at that. But Kelly Holcomb had the most outstanding playoff performance uh, in NFL history up until that point, and Tim Couch led them to the playoffs. Is Tyrod Taylor really the best Browns quarterback in a quarter century? The, the quarterback that the Bills didn't want so they could t- try out the Peterman experiment, the quarterback they don't want is the best Browns quarterback in, in a quarter of a century? Well, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, how, how are we doing this? Is it by reputation? By just how good they are right now? Well, I mean, Vinny Testaverde was the quarterback in 94 and 95, but he wasn't very good. It was All the right, tail so end of his career. Solid. I mean, Jeff Garcia had a reputation before he came to town and ruined it. Right. It, it, the audience would not dispute what I'm saying, right? The Browns are interesting. 
I mean, I think they're super interesting. All four of their preseason games were nationally televised on either NFL Network or Fox. Hard Knocks was a superb season, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Browns fan. I think the general feedback on that was it was an outstanding season for that show. They have two of the more dynamic, evil off- uh, offense and defensive coordinators That's you've crazy. ever seen. What they're doing is crazy. I, I, it's almost literally crazy. You got Todd Haley that as, as tempestuous a personality as is in assistant coaching. And then you got Greg Williams, who was basically wearing a disguise for a whole year on the sidelines as he, <laughs> as he slinked back into the game. He dyed his whole face. I'm going to be so crushed if they can't beat Pittsburgh without Le'Veon Bell. Well, is Le'Veon Bell not coming in? Because I thought Pouncey said he was guaranteeing that he'd be in today. Me neither. Dude, man, <laughs> I would sit him in fantasy. Let's just say that. Would you? But he, last season he came in about this time, didn't he? He just yeah. sort of showed up. Still a couple yet. of practices, not I got, even. I got Le'Veon Bell on alert right now. Yeah. I mean, he shows up right now. Does he, does he start, though? Wait a minute. You guys, believe, you guys believe that he's going to cost himself a million dollars a game or $900,000 a game but beginning on Sunday? I don't know what to believe. This dude seems pretty principled. We'll ask Adam Schefter when he joins us in a half hour. And also, that Cowboys offer for Earl Thomas appears to have been upped. What is that, a radio tease you just did? Yeah. <laughs> well, like tell, a, tell us who upped They're up it. to a second round. Whoa! <laughs> Schefter in a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of teases are those? Stu Gatz here. The Dan Levitard Show podcast is brought to you by Capital One. Capital One wants to build a better bank, one that feels and acts nothing like a typical bank. It's why they're reimagining banking by offering accounts with no fees or minimums and one of the best saving rates in America. You could open a Capital One account from anywhere in five minutes. That's banking reimagined. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Capital One and a... Hello, everybody. You're looking live at Fansville, a college football utopia. Fansville. Where the rivers flow with ice-cold Dr. Pepper. Delicious. Where every day is Saturday and everyone's a fan, even babies. Fan babies. And the seasons never change because the only season is college football season. Get a taste of Fansville this fall during a college football game near you. Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Grab some today. Mike, can we go Suey montage winners here? Can we announce all of the winners from our Sueys? All right, we will do that in the next uh, in this segment after Stugatz is done updating you on sports news. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Adam Schefter going to be here in a half hour, twelve thirty Eastern. Here's your Sports Center update. The American Gaming Association says a fully mature U.S. sports gambling market could be worth $2.3 billion annually to the NFL. Doc Rivers says that it bothers him that his former players, Ray Allen, Ray John Rondo, Paul Pierce, and Kevin Garnett, can't get along. And finally, Chrissy Teigen projectile vomited during her daughter's school orientation. Not at home, not a problem, because now you can get pizza delivery to over 150,000 unexpected outdoor locations like parks, beaches, and more with Domino's Hotspots. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hotspots. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Mike, all at once, we're going to play them one after another. So are there any giant surprises here? Were there? Any, this was a lot of loaded categories. You guys voted all week. It's our annual award show. Yeah, pure cut. Um, some upsets. Dismissal, I think, is a huge upset. This is a montage of all the winners from all the categories. Okay, all the categories. Again, imagine. I, I mean, Stugatz dismissals was the was the best picture category. I mean, here's the thing. There are so many of my dismissals in there that I don't really have a chance of winning. I have a feeling, I haven't checked, I am dying to know. I have a feeling I know who won. I think the greatest sound in the history of our show was also in that category and probably won and deserved to win. Liam Neeson? Yeah. All right, well, we'll find out together. And now your 2018 Suey Award winners. Best revelation. Tim Kirchin's bizarre dream about shooting free throws. I have a recurring nightmare three, four times a year that I'm at the free throw line and I'm shooting a free throw and instead of shooting a basketball, I'm shooting a winter coat. 
What? You can't shoot. You can't shoot a winter coat. Right. It, does, it opens up and you shoot an air ball every time. Wow. That is a recurring nightmare Wait. that I have. Best story. Dan's awkward interaction with doctor during testicular ultrasound. Ah. So yesterday, I have to have a testicular ultrasound. Bear of a man explains to me what I have to do. And what I have to do is I have to get on my back on a slab, throw my legs up in the air. Yeah, I need to cup my package with my left hand. Again, legs up in the air on my back. As I'm on this table on my back, and it's being explained that the gel is very cold and it's going to take about six or seven minutes, and and there's going to be a wand, an ultrasound wand that is waved over, you know, the ultrasounded areas, as all of this is being explained to me, I'm there on my back just shaking my head like, how has my life arrived here? I'm saying to myself as I'm doing this, it can't get worse than this. It simply can't. This is the worst thing to ever happen to me. He looks me straight in the eye for the first time. And I'm in this position before the wand and the gel, and here we go. We're about to get started. And he says, I am such a big fan of your TV and radio shows. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you say anything about me? <laughs> uh, yes, actually, which is how we ended up in the next seven minutes of conversation where at various points he's laughing because I'm yelling at him about all of this. Right. At this point, I'm like, dude, like that's the time you choose to tell me that. But you're laughing. Um, I, well, I, I am laughing. I'm also mystified. I'm vulnerable. I'm still scared. It sounds like he had a ball. Best Stugatz mispronunciation. SWAT team. Yeah. SWAT team. Uncomfortable moment. The entire Rob Manfred interview. Ah. I think you cared oh, more about no. that $1.2 billion asking price than you did about the fans of South Florida. Yeah, well, can I tell you something? Um, you actually have no idea what I care about and don't care about. The fact of the matter is a competitive club in each one of our 30 markets is my foremost concern. All right, we got to go. I'm sorry, Commissioner. We're 10 minutes past time. Thank you for I, – I appreciate you being respectful. Thank you, sir. All right, bye. Best prediction. Dan would take Roy Hibbert over Tim Duncan. <laughs> you got a seven-game series against the Heat that you've got to win tomorrow. I'm giving you the entire league to pick players from. Who's your Eight first years pick? Ago. I would take Tim Duncan. You need a big because 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 obviously no, Miami. No, no, no. I can't believe you took Duncan over Hibbert. Like, what are you talking about? Stay yeah. strong, Stephen. I would take I would take Tim Duncan. Yeah, me too. <laughs> over Hibbert. Yep. Best laugh. Mina Kimes. <laughs> Worst mistake. Dan thought former Utah Jazz coach Frank Layden was dead. Who the hell's a happy coach? Is there such a thing? As a happy coach. How about Frank Layden? Frank Layden was great. He's also dead and has been for many years. Frank Layden still with us. Yeah. What? Wow. That's a fun. Wait a minute. What? An egregious one. Wait a minute. What? Ten dollars, man. There's, I mean, you just killed a man who's alive. There's no Wait death, a minute. There's no death date on his Wikipedia. Well, that can't be right. It's Wait a, a minute. So he's alive. If Wikipedia, there's no death Wait date. a minute. Why can't it be Did right? I just confuse him with Rick Majerus? Because of Utah? Utah. That is what just happened. Yep. That I'm so sorry, Frank Layden. Another fun. It is a fun. <laughs> Best back in my day. Bathroom time. Rich and poor share this room. Heads of state and supermodels to hobos, you and me. It's all that we have in common. That at some point soon, we'll all be alone in the can. Drawers at our ankles, pinching a loaf. Oh. Back in my day, bathroom oh. time was a quiet celebration. <laughs> oh. An almost oh. holy time of solitude and reflection, where we might tackle the meaning of life, or at least reconnoiter our own life. That changed. The communion of the commode has been usurped by the smartphone from which we are powerless to untether. You wouldn't be caught on your phone in church or during dinner, so why on earth would you desecrate the sanctum of the toilet, that most sacred of rooms where your day's most intimate business is done? Folks, ditch the smartphone and get back to you time in that most essential of rooms. Feel a kinship with the world as you flush 
and reach for the spray and understand that somewhere Warren Buffett and Rihanna are doing the same thing, <laughs> though likely in different rooms. Best limited fake. Chris Cody's fake Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil was a middle linebacker for Tulsa. <laughs> That's not true. Please tell me. That can't true. be true. What are you doing? You're offsides. <laughs> I hope you have more left in your tank. Is that all you've got? Is that all? Do you have anything left? Now that's encroachment. <laughs> Are there any other football terms? <laughs> he needs funny phrases. Somebody give him funny phrases. Bail him out. I love a good squib kick. <laughs> <laughs> squib kick is an excellent phrase. Squib kick. Do you have anything else in your arsenal? Also love a good pooch punt. Yeah, pooch is good. Yes. What else do you have in your comedic? word arsenal is there anything else to squeeze from this sit hut flea flicker (laughs) (laughs) epic sound of the year billy calls the first pitch of the 2018 mlb season jose arena standing at the back of the mound he reaches down he's rubbing some dirt and rosin on his hand and here we go all right and the wind up and the pitch Oh, God, a home run on the first pitch of the game. Oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome, Derek Jeter. And that concludes our Marlins coverage for the season. Best musical performance, Mina Kimes, DMX. X, gotta give it to you. <laughs> Sorry. Don't try it again. Hold on. You got five seconds. You got five wait, seconds. Wait, 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 you got wait, anything wait, wait. better. Hurry wait, up. Wait, wait. F's going to give it to <laughs> Best dismissal. Liam Neeson dismisses taking a pay cut, courtesy of the AP. There's a lot of discussion about it and a lot of healthy, unnecessary discussion about it because the disparity sometimes is <laughs> disgraceful. How do you think we can move past that? We're starting. We're starting, and it has to start, you know, and it's it's starting with these extraordinary actresses and brave ladies, and and, uh, and we, as men, have got to be part of it, you know. We started it, so we have to be part of the solution. So would you take a pay cut to kind of equal things out? No. <laughs> pay cut? No, 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 no. That's gone too far. Thanks, yes. Excellent. Yes. Just an excellent year of, of nonsense. Uh, Stugatz has got an early submission for mistake of the year for next year. He uh, he said earlier here that Testaverde was at the tail end of his career in 1994 with the Browns. Testaverde, uh, he uh, retired in 2008. <laughs> so 14 years after what Stugatz had pronounced was the tail end of Testaverde's career. <laughs> Money, 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 money. I mean, you go to play quarterback for the Browns, you usually don't make it out alive. I'm surprised by that. I, I still don't think Sugats was inaccurate there. It was a tail end of a 50 year yeah, career. Yeah, put on the poll. Was the tail end of Vinny Testaverde's career 14 years? I'm a squeaky toy, and I've got one job getting chomped on by this little ankle sniffer. So pardon me for feeling inept compared to Geico, who does so much more. Like, while I'm getting slobbered on, Geico is creating cool technology like their mobile app, which lets people pay their bills or file a claim. Plus, Geico is the fastest growing auto insurer for the last 10 years. Is it too much for me to ask for one more feature? Fast and friendly claim service like Geico, maybe? Oh, great. I'm getting buried again. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Don Lebertard. The scam I was running in college is I'm a sophomore and I'm working for the Miami Herald. And by the tail end of my senior year, the Herald was always leaving me alone because they thought I had to finish schoolwork. And the professors were leaving me alone because they thought I had to do Miami Herald work. And so I was just at the rat all the time. And so the last semester, I have no idea what my grades were. I do know I stopped caring about them. Stugatz. I, I think I graduated. Can you call the university? Can you guys call the I, university? Yes, let's no. call. Let's split. No, we but have seriously, to do this. we yeah. should call their records department and ask them if I've actually graduated because I don't know if I have. We might have a George O'Leary situation where I've been pretending to be a University of Miami grad all my life, but I haven't actually graduated. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. So is Le'Veon Bell really just going to show up on Friday, uh, collect his game check, and not play? Is he going to dump a game for the Pittsburgh Steelers 
and the fan base and start what this is probably his last season with the Steelers, and he's going to start it that way. That uh, What do you do if you're Tomlin? If he shows up Friday, you can't play him, can you? Why not? I mean, just without any... Without taking a snap, without taking, without Todd doing... Gurley hasn't played in the preseason. I'm certain the Rams are going to start him on Sunday. Yeah, but he's been at practice and in the facility tra- uh, training and getting ready for their week one opponent. Mike, you're the coach of the Steelers. Le'Veon Bell shows up tomorrow. You're telling me you're not starting him on Sunday? He's your best player. I mean, him or Antonio Brown, your how best you, players. How do you know if they're ready or not? I think they're doing this thing with them where he's not going to start but who knows how much he actually plays. As long as he shows up by fr- a Friday or Saturday he's guar- and signs that tender, he's guaranteed his week one paycheck, but him not showing up to the Wednesday of a game week at the facility, a lot of people assume this just rules him out for week one. Roethlisberger saying he's operating as if Connor's going to be starting. We, we haven't seen this kind of mercenary in the modern age where he fools around with the holdout. He goes, shows up at Dairy Queen and fills out an application. He... uh he messes with the fan base by doing things on social media, reminding everyone how valuable he is. It's it's not something that is normal in that league that where you're allowed to be this this kind of um, not team oriented, this kind of business oriented right. in a way that is thrown in the face of your customers. I think he would say it's not normal to not pay someone long term big deal uh, who is this good. That's what Le'Veon Bell would say. He showed up roughly around the same time last year, right? It took him three weeks to really get going, but he did play in that first game. He had 10 carries for 32 yards. So I mean, he had 406 touches last season. I don't blame Le'Veon Bell for wanting to get his check and maybe skip one well, of those games. Well, wait a games. minute. This What you say is interesting there, Mike, because that's what ultimately ran Ricky Williams out of the league. The idea that Wanstead was running him into the line 400 times a season, season after season after season. And that's, uh, that's, that's inhumane. Like, And so the way that the Steelers used Le'Veon Bell, absolutely you understand why in a game where your body can betray you, you'd want to get that money up front. You'd understand, too, why he's hurt. As he sees that Todd Gurley is getting money, the Rams, the Rams are not afraid, man. The Rams are going all in on what they have right now. They they believe that now is Rams football time. I mean, you want to talk mercenary? Sue is a mercenary. One year deal, just a guaranteed, just big time one year deal. He's going to go from team to team doing that. They got to leave that locker room dynamic. Didn't they get Peters too? Man, man. I mean, yeah, they're just taking – they're, they are the Statue of Liberty for every guy in the league who's got a, an attitude problem. They wanted in on Beckham when people were talking about whether the Giants – Yeah, so they settled for Cooks just nine route after nine route. That's it. I mean, that's all that's, all that's going to be right there. It's just go 70 yards as fast as you can, please. We thought Sammy Watkins was going to do that for us, and he couldn't. We'll get younger Sammy Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> um, Le'Veon Bell, we've talked about what a mercenary Revis was. But what Le'Veon Bell is doing is usually, think about you know what Jarvis Landry is being quoted saying in Sports Illustrated, all the mythology that he feeds. Cleveland is a working man's town. I'm a working man's receiver as he sits in a fitting room being fed strawberries and brought Gucci. Le'Veon Bell is throwing this in the face of a city that doesn't like it very much. A face where the city still gets its identity from its football team because because its baseball team hasn't been uh, what its football team is since Barry Bonds. They'll like it plenty in a few weeks where you know, he has 162 yards on the ground and eight catches for 94 y- uh, yards and a couple of touchdowns. They'll, they'll be just fine. I know, I mean, but, I know but, his, but his career is over in Pittsburgh. Like it's it's well, you well, win. Pittsburgh with- does have the option to pay the man. I mean, I'm certain he'd stay there if they'd offered him a good contract. I mean, they would have done that already if they could have. Like you got to take care of your employees when they're unhappy and that kind of value. But look at what the Packers just did for Aaron Rodgers. That was almost an act of altruism. It's as close as football comes to being a dot org. They had him locked up for till he's 39 years old, and they just decided to pay him because they know it's fair. There were a lot of complaints from NFL players during the NBA offseason about how the NBA players get these guaranteed contracts. 
NFL since then has stepped up, and the game's biggest stars are getting big time guaranteed contracts. And Bobani made this point on Twitter. Kirk Cousins, pioneer, a player compensation pioneer mm-hmm. in getting that ninety contract. million guaranteed, guaranteed. And Le'Veon Bell is sitting there. You think Le'Veon Bell thinks Kirk Cousins is better than him at football? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that part's interesting. We'll talk about it. And the new book, we're going to take a serious turn here because Adam Schefter has written a serious book. We will talk with him about football and that book next. Don Lebatard. You are the best, and when I say the best, I mean the very worst and most evil. Stugatz. The worst. But this time, the it's for real. The worst. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Adam Schefter expected to join us here in just a minute on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. The American Gaming Association says a fully mature U.S. sports gambling market could be worth $2.3 billion annually to the NFL. Doc Rivers says that it bothers him that his former players, Ray Allen, Ray John Rondo, Paul Pierce, and Kevin Garnett, can't get along. Still a story, man. Jeez. Is Ray Allen going to the Hall of Fame? Is that is uh, what's happening? That this is still is Doc Rivers just said this for what reason? I mean, it's Rondo's fault. All of it, everything. Okay, because it's what he thought. He, he said it because someone asked him, and it's what he thought. Yeah. Zip it up, Doc Rivers. Uh, just uh, aren't we tired of the story already? I mean, they won championships together. They were the first super team. They were the super team before the Heat created a super team. I mean, they won a championship. Like. I am Jeez. tired at how quickly you get tired of stories. I am tired of how uh, what a go-to move it is of yours to say how tired you are of a story. I mean, focus on the Clippers. Stop worrying about what happened with the Celtics. You, you want a title t- there. You get tired of stories faster than anyone else does. I, really, I need to move on quickly. <laughs> It's it's it is one of the I don't know if it's the signature move in your arsenal, but being tired of a story is always funny with you. Yeah, yeah. the uh, Durant story I'll never get tired <laughs> right. of. Though. That much I can tell. No, you. we're <laughs> tired of you with that dog, uh, that that bone that, that that dog has in his mouth. What? Adam Schefter is. Uh, we're getting him in position. He he sprinted to the studio. I can hear him in queue. He is out of breath. Yes, he is winded. He is oh. winded. He is making the book tour. Uh, he is touring with his book. Mike, is he working two phones right now? He is working multiple phones right now. Is there Le'Veon Bell news? We were going to check in. Right, This is very exciting. We're going to check in with Adam Schefter as he checks his phone. All right. And finally, a Kentucky man was arrested in the cafeteria of Baptist Health Corbin Hospital after he faked a heart attack to get a ride there. When the ambulance arrived at the hospital, he jumped out and casually walked to the cafeteria, grabbed something to eat. While he was enjoying his food, officers from the Knox County Sheriff's Office arrived and took him into custody. He was charged with burglary and falsely reporting an incident. That's a heady play, man. I am so tired watching 30 seconds of Adam Schefter's life right now. He's just searching his phone, and he's searching his phone for nuggets. He just sprinted in here. Football season's days away, and this is what his life is going to be like until it starts. Just sprinting from place to place, hyperventilating, <laughs> and waiting for mug- nuggets of information. <laughs> not at home, not a problem, because now you get pizza delivery to over 150,000 unexpected outdoor locations like parks, beaches, and more with Domino's Hotspots. Visit dominoes.com for details on Domino's Hotspots. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. It's crazy right now at ESPN because football's approaching. So Schefter will be running one way, Riddick will be running another, Mort will be running another. They all collide, fall down like bowling pins, and then they get back up and give you news and information. How did Schefter find time to write a book? Honestly. I, I, I don't know. Well, he's got to be a crazy person. I mean, he has to be. I don't know how he has time. So we're going to talk to him about the book in a second. But Schefter, what's the information on your phone right now? Give us what you got on your phone. What to what, give us nuggets of football nuggets? Well, Dan, I think the interesting thing is going on right now. Josina Anderson reported a short time ago. Earl Thomas is reporting to the Seahawks today, so that holdout is ending. Whoa! And a short time ago, I had said that the Dallas Cowboys recently had increased their offer within the last week for Earl Thomas to a second round draft pick. The Seahawks said no. And the Seahawks want more in return for Earl Thomas. There's a school of thought here. Follow this. The Seahawks play at Denver this week in their opener. 
They play at Chicago in week two. And Seattle's home opener is week three at home against Dallas. Do you think that you want to trade Earl Thomas to the team that you're opening up at home against? I guess for the right price, you will. But maybe you want to wait till Monday after week three and then trade Earl Thomas to the Dallas Cowboys at that point in time. But am I right in understanding, Adam, that the Dallas Cowboys have bowed out? I don't know if they've bowed out. Look, people can say they've bowed out. Maybe they've bowed out today. Does that mean that they've bowed out next week or the week after or when they suffer another safety injury? I would not put too much credence or stock into that right now, Stugatz. We'll see how it all unfolds going forward. Guillermo, can you look up for me the origins of the phrase bowing out? Like, why are we bowing while making our way out? Do we know? Does anyone know why we're saying that that Don't way? Don't you bow at the end of a play or some sort of performance and you're is that, on the way is out? That, is that what bowing out is? That's like my I, best I, guess. Schefter, you got a guess? Uh, bowing out means you like you bow and oh, then you're I know, out. I know what it means, but where does it come from? Like, from, does it come uh, from the theater? Uh, uh, where, uh, where does jumbo shrimp come from, Dan? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair question. <laughs> man. In the sea. Yes. Anyway, so Adam Schefter with us on ESPN Radio. We'll talk about his book in a second. What is the most likely scenario for Le'Veon Bell? Look, if he's not there today, why would he be there at all in Week One? And throughout the course of the spring, I've always maintained that this is a business decision for Le'Veon Bell, that he has to do what's best for him to get himself into March and into free agency to be healthy. The longer he stays away, I don't care about missing out on $855,000 a week when you're talking about a $60, $70 million contract that awaits you, the more he does to preserve his health, to prevent the number of touches that he would get, to prevent the wear and tear that inevitably would occur if you were on the Steelers roster. So last year, if you just look at history, he was there Monday and played six days later in the opener. This year, he wasn't there Monday. He's not there Tuesday. He's not there today. Why would you think he's coming in this week? I don't think he is. I'd be surprised if we see Le'Veon Bell play in week one. And I think it becomes a week-to-week decision with him, analyzing when he feels ready to go in and rejoin his teammates But he's been a franchise player the last two years with the franchise tag. The two sides have been unable to get that deal done. I think more and more in the NFL, we've seen the franchise tag be a a divisive force between player and team. Players don't like it. And yes, the teams can use it, but they've used it as a weapon in many cases. And in this particular case, it hasn't helped the situation. And I don't think we see Le'Veon Bell in week one. Can you give us your opinion, not what you've reported, but can you give us your opinion on everything that happened with the Raiders and Mac? You want my opinion? Yes. Yes. I think it's unfortunate that it came to that, that when you've got a player like that, that somehow you have to figure out a way to get it done. And my opinion is that John Gruden didn't like Khalil Mack enough to pay him that money that the other teams were willing to pay him. He saw more value in the draft picks. And so he ultimately made a decision that he himself said he's going to be second-guessed for from now until the cows come home. Whenever the cows come home. That could be the time the cows that we come out of the jumbo when, shrimp or When are the cows coming home? When are the cows home? When when the they jumbo shrimp home? come home? Yeah. All right, very good. <laughs> Let's talk about his book with him. Again, Adam Schefter. He's got a new memoir. It's, it's The Man I Never Met. It's available now. You can also listen to the Adam Schefter podcast with new episodes weekly on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. Uh, it feels to me when I read some of the details of this story, Adam, that this is a bit of a love story. It's not just a memoir. That this is uh, this is about your wife. This is about your family. This is about a, a man you never met. Well, it's about all those things, Dan. I think ultimately it's a tribute to my wife's late husband, Joe Mayo, who lost his life on 9-11. It's a tribute to my wife for the strength and determination that she showed to get through that while she was raising her then 15-month-old son, Devin. I think it's designed to pay tribute to them. It's also obviously a story about grief, but it's about hope. And it's heartbreaking. It's heartwarming. And yes, there is a love story in there. There's a lot in there. And it stemmed from a piece that we ran on ESPN on the opening day of the 2016 NFL season on the 15th anniversary of 9-11. And that piece that ran, and if you haven't seen it, I'd invite you to go Google it, that piece that ran generated more reaction than anything I've ever done in 28 years in the business. And so this book is the 200-page version, much more personal, much more detailed, of the six-minute piece that ran on the 15th anniversary of 9-11. Was it difficult to get through for you, Adam? Was it difficult for you to get through this book? It had to be, right? It's, it, was, it was hard in many ways. It was challenging to put a book like that together. 
Uh, Dan's always been a great writer. He knows that there are certain pieces that you write that are more complex and more delicate and more sensitive than others. And there can be nothing that is more delicate and sensitive than putting together a memoir about your wife's late husband and the life that she led and how she tried to get on and talking about Joe's parents, Paula and George Mayo, and how they tried to pick up the pieces. And look, again, there are 3,000 stories from that day, more, about how it impacted everybody. And we're no different. Their story is certainly unique. It's heartbreaking. But there are a lot of them from that day. This story just happens to be ours. Where does this rank in terms of fulfilling work that you've done? Just in, in having completed it and being proud of what it is that you've completed. Well, Dan, there's nothing that I've ever written. I was in the newspaper business for 16 years. I've written four other books besides this. There's nothing that I've ever been a part of from a writing standpoint that I feel like I've ever been more proud of, if that means anything. Um, The fulfillment comes, in all honesty, I hope a lot of people read it. I hope a lot of people are inspired and touched and moved by it. But the truth of the matter is, all that mattered to me was how Paula and George Mayo viewed the book about their son and how Shari viewed the book about her husband and how our son viewed the book. Now, three of the four have read it. Devin's a freshman at college, and he's too busy getting settled in and taking classes to read the book just yet. Hopefully he will, and I'm sure in time he'll learn plenty about his father. But again, Joe's parents loved the book. Shari loved the book. And the fact that they did, honestly, is more fulfilling than anything that anybody else could say to me. That's very cool. The yeah. man I never met. You should check it out. Now that we've gotten out of that, that out of the way, though, and that's the serious stuff, just Stugatz has a bone to pick with you. He uh, Stugatz is a bit enraged because he was asking me the other day uh, how he sends you a tip. And then he sent you a tip, and soon thereafter, Listen. you reported the tip as fact, and he wanted a hat tip, he wanted credit, and you gave him no credit. I, all I wanted on Twitter was, you know, hockey assist from at Stugat790, something like that. Like, I feel like I made a little contribution <laughs> to that. I called you, I actually called you during the radio show right. he called to give you some information. With I mean, the, can we reveal what that information was? Are we allowed to reveal? Well, yeah, do you want the full backstory? I'm Listen. I mean this. When somebody from work calls me with tips, I'm never too proud to take information from anybody. Like any, I'm, I feel like I would like to be information wasteland. If anybody has any tips and they want to call me, I welcome all tips. <laughs> Stugatz was one of two ESPN employees to call me on Thursday morning, I believe it was, right? Stugatz, was, it, yes. was it the actual Friday mo- Thursday, the day before, day It was right of. when the Aaron Donald stuff happened. Uh, it was the day of. I'm sorry, Adam. It was day of. Right. Okay, so, again... Look, look, listen, he thought of calling me. I'll just say this. I appreciate it. Sugats, let me give you a big assist now for calling me and letting me know that you were being told that Aaron Donald was signing, and I appreciate that. Assist to you. Tremendous job on your part, Thank Stugatz. you. Would have appreciated it more that <laughs> yes, day and yes, on Twitter, but yes, I'll take yes, it. I'll, I'll take, take it. it however you're <laughs> delivering it. Thank you, and congratulations on the book, Adam. We always appreciate uh, Thank you, you stopping guys. by and giving us time. It's a, it's a book worth reading. Thank it's you. a story worth telling. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. AARP can help you become your healthiest self. It's why we offer health tips for your body and your brain. So take on today and every day with AARP. Learn how at takeontoday.aarp. Don Lebatard. I would love to see you own a farm. Yeah. What would you do? Oh, for the farm? love of God. I, I would Mike, fix my farm. Let, I would starve. I would lose weight. I wouldn't know what to do. Still got stand on a tractor. Imagine. <laughs> Mike, milk my cow. Man. Imagine. <laughs> There can't be a worse farmer than me anywhere walking this planet. I think I'm a close second on that. <laughs> I don't. I think everybody in the world would be better than me. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Let's update the polls, Stugats. Uh, let's do that at your leisure. Okay. At Lebatard Show. The Twitter poll is brought to you by Discover Card. Discover things. Annual fees are ridiculous. If you do, too, find out more at discover.com. Again, at Lebatard Show on Twitter. Should Chris's friend Sia come on to give fantasy advice? Hmm. So in the local hour, we've been doing things that mostly people dislike. And Chris suggested having his friend Sia come on to give fantasy advice for some reason. So we, we put it to the poll. Okay. This dude's good. He's, like, been in, like, a million fantasy leagues. He's, like, missed the playoffs, like, one time. He's a ringer. I have one. It's Inferno. 
I mean, I've offered Inferno to come on the air here and share his fantasy expertise. Uh, he said no. Nothing in the world I would want uh, less than that. That's why he said no. I'm not joking. He said, Levitar doesn't want that. Only you do. And I said, okay, we won't do it. Uh, 70% of the audience said yes to Sia, though. Is it weird that Guillermo knows who Kiss is, but doesn't know who the Beastie Boys are? It is weird, man. It's not accurate. I said that they mean nothing to me. I didn't say I don't know who they are. I'm familiar with them. I've seen you didn't know, them. When, no, when you saw a picture of them, you didn't recognize them. You didn't know who they were. You said, who are these three old guys? I mean, you sent me like this little tiny fuzzy picture. I had three random guys with a <laughs> Volkswagen thing around their neck. 87% of the audience said yes. Is that like a classic thing of theirs? Like that picture is a classic picture? No, but they are classic looking. Most people know what they look like. Like if you... If you're looking at American pop culture, the Beastie Boys are people that most people would know, I think, in our audience, what those people look like. Bah. <laughs> okay, good one. Get the Titans out of here with 8-8. Eight and eight. I mean. It was just a statement. It wasn't really a question. <laughs> 89% of the audience said yes. We should have just left it up there without any yes or no. I, just get them out of here, man. Get the Titans out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I feel so strongly about this. They're just a... They're, they're, they're boring. They're maybe. just tepid. <laughs> they're just a tepid franchise. Get them out of here. 89% said yes. I mean, <laughs> Does anyone in the Bills organization trust any other Bill? <laughs> great question i mean it's it's we were talking about who the hell trusts peterman but they don't trust peterman they just trust him more than josh allen because none of the bills trust each other 92 percent of the audience said no which was gary Busey's most iconic character he's going to be on with us tomorrow oh. and it's sure to be a train wreck oh, man. Like, it is it is 100 percent guaranteed so. after everything you've said today he may be joining us tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> your choices were mr joshua pappas from point break which should be the winner uh chet stedman and self dancing with the stars oh it should also be self and entourage he was great oh, that's in a good, yes that's funny uh, 38% of the audience went with Chet Stedman. Pappas was last. You said, well, the, you said Pappas was an iconic TV character. Yeah, he's not. He's not, evidently. Well, it's, he might be. And, and it's a movie. could be, too, yeah. yeah it's a movie. It's a How mad is Allison at me that I've uh, apparently set fire to the Gary Busey <laughs> interview? She's not, she's not been happy with you at all today on a number of different things. Oh, boy. I mean, you do it every day. This is my life. <laughs> this is what it's like booking for you. Is you it take everybody out. This is the classic first time Dan Aykroyd was on. Is Dan Aykroyd A-list? And then right before he comes on and then the publicist is like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, discussing is, whether he's A-list. spent my life saying sorry. <laughs> do you apologize more before or after guests Ooh, are on? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. It's so muddy. <laughs> so, but what did I lose him on? Was it calling his brain a fried egg? I mean, which is so bad because he was in an accident uh, and had, you know, oh, like oh, brain damage. Well, I did so not you, even know that. I did I not know just, that. I thought that was all just Hollywood. I thought that was all intravenously pumping Hollywood into his veins. Should he apologize or what do you think? Is oh, I should apologize for that. Bad. I didn't He's know super that. Rude. No, of this course, no. Wait a minute. Does. Of course, I should apologize for not knowing that. I do apologize for not knowing that. Um, but I just thought that Gary Busey was known that he had done such copious amounts of drugs that he was.